Welcome back to another engineering economics video. We're in chapter 5 in the textbook looking at ways of screening projects. In the previous two videos we looked at the payback period method, um, both the conventional and discounted method um, where the conventional does not take into consideration um, interest rates and uh, the discounted method does. But one of the shortcomings of the payback period method is it's only telling us how long it takes to break even. And it doesn't really give us a true idea of the profitability of a project. Um, if we were comparing two different options, uh, one might have a shorter payback period, um, but the other one might in the end be more profitable. And since businesses are um, they exist for the purpose of making profit, then um, you want to choose more profitable projects. So the, uh, the payback method of screening projects, while it um, is a well-known method, is not always the best, best method. Um, so we're going to look at some other ways of looking at a project to determine if it's something that we would want to consider. And so the next screening method we're going to look at is the net present worth analysis. So essentially uh, what this does is it looks at the total present value of the cash flow series of the project. And um, what we are looking at is um, a, a rate, like an, uh, like an interest rate, um, that we want to achieve and we're going to call that the minimum attractive rate of return. So um, if we look at the values of the cash flow series and uh, calculate it back to a, a present value, um, we can compare the return rate of the project to what we consider to be our minimum attractive rate of return. And based on that, decide whether or not we want to do the project. So for instance, if we say we want to have at least a 15% rate of return, we want an MARR of at least 15%, and we take a look at the cash flow series for a project and determine it only has a rate of return of 12, well, that doesn't meet our requirements of 15%, so we would reject that project. Um, we, we would only want things at 15 so what would the MARR for a company be? Well, again, that's going to change uh, or vary from company to company. Um, so, um, so there is no way of knowing what that will be. That's typically given in the problem statement. But once we know what that is, well, once we know what our goal is, um, we can uh, take a look at the, the life of the project what the cash flow will be throughout the life of the project, um, determine what the net cash flow is by taking uh, revenue minus any costs, any outgoing costs, um, and then we find using the MARR as our percentage rate, find the present value of all of these uh, cash flow values. And if by doing so, we end up with a positive present value or net present worth, then that means that we will earn more than our MARR. And so we would accept the project. If by um, summing the present values, we find that the net present worth is negative, that means that uh, this project is going to give us less than our MARR. It doesn't necessarily mean that the project is going to lose money. It just means that it's not going to make enough money to interest us. So let's look at an example here. Um, actually the same example, the same example we've been looking at. Um, and instead of doing a um, payback period analysis, we're going to do a net present worth analysis. And so we're going to say that um, our uh, minimum attractive rate of return is 15%. That's how much money we want to um, earn by doing this project. 
So I'm going to bring in my spreadsheet again. This is the spreadsheet I had used to find the payback period and the discounted payback period. Um, so we still are going to have the same investment, uh, the same savings, annual savings, and the same salvage value. Um, for this method, we do not need the cost of funds column. So I'll just delete that. And then my cash flow series just becomes the, um, the sum of these three columns. And rather than finding a cumulative total, which um, when doing the payback period, we wanted to know at what point we flip from red to black. So that's why we needed this cumulative uh, column. We're not going to need that for this particular analysis, so I'll delete that as well and delete this stuff down here. So instead, what we want to do is we want to find the present value of uh, our cash flow series. So I'm going to create um, a function here equals present value of now our rate that we want to achieve is 0.15 or 15 percent and the number of periods is um, the value in our n column over here. There's no payment and instead this um, cash flow amount is our future value. So we're going to select that. And Excel always flips the sign of your future value to present value. So since this value is negative, it makes the present value positive. But I, I don't want it to do that here. So I'm going to go back into my formula and make this uh, future value negative, uh, the value in cell E2, because this is um, a cost. This isn't our, our investment. This is what we have to spend. And we want to keep that even as at the present value. Uh, that's still an outgoing cost. So we want to keep that negative. Um, and then we can just take this function and copy it down. And so the value of the initial investment didn't change because the investment is made at time period zero. It's made at the beginning of the project. So its value is not affected by the time value of money. But all of these others are. All these other cash flow values are discounted. They're slightly less um, because it's more valuable to have the money today than it is a year from now. So um, again, we're discounting this value. This is telling us that this, if we had $394,782 and we invested it for one year at 15%, it would become $454,000. And so each of these um, values progressively gets discounted more and more because they are going further and further out into the future. So we have all of these discounted revenue, positive values, versus this one big negative investment value. So if we add this all up, create a sum of this column, we can see that we do end up with a positive value. So this is going to make, this is not necessarily the profit made by this project, but um, this is what we would um, make, what it's worth would be above and beyond the 15% that we desire. So if we had summed up this column and this was a negative value, again, it doesn't necessarily mean that the project would lose money. It just means that it wouldn't make our 15% goal. It's going to make something less than that. So this is telling us that, yes, we are going to make our 15%. Uh, in fact, we're going to make, looks like, $1.5 million more than the 15% um, that was our goal. So this looks like a good project. This is one that we should do. If our company's minimum attractive rate of return is 15%, then this is uh, definitely worth it. So that brings me to the end of this chapter. So we've looked at three different methods of 
screening a project, in other words, looking at a project to determine if it's one uh, our company wants to do. We've looked at the um, payback method, the discounted payback method, and the um, net present worth method of analysis. So if you have any questions, be sure to let me know in class or post questions to the discussion board. Um, and good luck with the homework.